Right, and we look into the final topic here, chapter number five, NAT server. So NAT server map an internal server to a public network through a one-to-one -one mapping between a public address port number and a private IP port number. This function is used when the internal server need to provide service to the public network. So an external host proactively access the public IP with the port number to communicate with the internal server. So we call it as a NAT server. Some of the uh, vendor, they also call port forwarding, okay? So the concept is very similar to our static, except that static is only purely based on IP, but net server based on both IP address and the port number. So here I have a port number of 122.121 colon 80. So this is where I have my public IP and port number 80, but I'm not interested to go to the router web server. I will map it back into my internal 192.168.1.10 port 80. My web server is here. Okay, so this is called NAT server. So let's look into the mechanism on how this one works. If you already understand the static NAT, dynamic NAT, NAPT, and EZIP, then this one is basically is the same. So let's look into the mechanism. On the first step, the source 200.123, this part here, with the port number of 47819, which is a random port number, accessing to the destination of 122.1.2.1, which is the NAT uh, public IP. Now, because you are using port number 80, and based on my table, based on my table over here, if you are looking for my public IP port 80, I'm going to map into 192.168.1.10 uh, colon 80, which is also port number 80 in my internal. So here I have 192.168.1.10 is also port number 80. So it actually reached to the web server. Now the web server is going to return and uh, reply the packet. When it reply the packet, it's still using its own internal source IP port number 80. But the destination right now, as you can see, is 200.1.2.3, which is belong to here. Okay. The port number, as you mentioned, as you can see from here, 47819, which is corresponding to the port number, is the request from the source. And when you go through the NAT, you see what happened to the source here, 192.168.1.10 are being translated to 122.1. Dot two dot one colon eighty, and the uh, data will uh, received by the requester. Okay, so this is a net server example, and for you to configure this is also very easy. On the NAT, the configuration will be something like this: configure NAT server on R one to map the internal server one nine two one six eight one dot ten with the port number eighty to the public IP address of one two two one two one with the port 8080. Now, why do you uh, want to change this number? Which means that if I have uh, 200, 123, this guy, looking for IP address of 122121 with a port number 8080, I'm going to map into the web server. Now, this is quite common because sometimes some of our router also have a web server, all right, which is port 80. So when you connect into your web server, uh, port number 80, it will confuse the router thinking that they are really looking into the router web service instead of your internal uh, web server. So for us to prevent this conflict, we are using another port number. So as you can see from this configuration, what you really need to do is on the external interface, you just have to specify this uh, command, net server protocol TCP global, 122.121.www, which is port number 80, inside, uh, which is 192.168.1.10, external is 8080. Okay, try this out. So some of the uh, uh, other vendors, they call it as a port forwarding, but on Huawei, we just call it as a NAT server. So the concept is the same. So as a summary, uh, in this topic, we look into uh, NAT, 
using private addresses on private network and using NAT at the egress effectively reduce the number of required public IPv4 addresses. Net effectively elevated the shortage of public IPv4 address. Remember the PAT that we mentioned early on with the easy IP. Dynamic NAT, NAPT and easy IP provide source address translation for private network to access to public network. NAT server enable internal server to provide services to public network. This is how we advertise our uh, web server to external. Am I right? So for those of you who have your CCTV at home, most likely you are going to use a net server because your CCTV is using internal IP. If you have your application who want to access to your internal CCTV, you use net server. Static NAT provide one-to-one -one mapping and support bi-directional communication. Static mapping is just one-to-one. -one. You just want to hide the IP address with the uh, public IP to the private IP. Okay, so that's the end for this session. I will see you on the next module. Thank you. Bye-bye.